Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to my Unity 3D tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the integrated light mapper for Unity 3D. Now this particular tutorial uh, will only cover, well you can use it obviously if you have Pro, but this tutorial will cover the light mapping features for Unity Indie. Okay, so there are a few things that are required to actually be able to obviously um, make a light map. Obviously, first we need some objects. So I'm going to create other, sorry, game object, create other cube. And I'm going to position this at 0, 0. I'm going to scale it up 10, 0 0.1, and 10. Okay. The next thing, obviously, is I'm going to create another set of cubes and I'm going to hold control and position these on top of alright and actually you know what I'm going to go on ahead and real quickly I'm going to just apply our textures that we used in our first tutorial All right, and now I'm just going to actually, so I don't have to create a empty. All right, sorry about this. Now the next requirement is in order for Unity 3D to know what objects can be used in light sources, everything must be checked to static. Anything static uh, when you bake will be taken into account when you are using the light mapper. That includes lights, uh, terrain, objects, everything. All right. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is now that everything has been marked as static, so I'm going to switch over to the light mapping and I'm going to create other, sorry, game object, create other directional light. I'm going to set the rotation to 45-45. I'm going to decrease the intensity to 0 0.3. I'm going to check the static box and go over to light mapping. And you'll see that we have some options over here for our light as well as well, all of our uh, objects in the scene actually have uh, settings. But for this case, um, our already generated assets don't really have much they just have check a static and scale on light map and we just leave all this at default now you could either do it over here or over here we're going to set the shadows to soft and because I'm in pro as you can see I already have shadows casting all right <clears throat> now with our object selected we have light mapping you can either set it to real time only and this means that this light will only take into account uh, well, sorry, the light mapper won't take into account of it. However, you could just uncheck static and it would achieve the same effect. Or you can leave it to auto. And you can also set it to baked only, so it'll only cast a baked shadow. We're just going to leave it at auto. You can adjust the intensity, the bounce intensity for the direct lighting. We're going to leave this at 1. Um, now, for baked shadows, we're going to use soft shadows. And the more shadow samples we use, um, the higher quality they're going to look. So we're just going to set this up to 800. And I know 800 samples, it won't actually take as long as you think. And we're going to leave the shadow angle at zero. All right, now we're going to go over to bake. Now we're going to turn bounces to zero. Uh, if you have pro, um, we don't want to actually use global illumination in this tutorial. Now dual light maps uh, allows you to create a far and near light map. It takes more time to render, however it looks much better and is very nicely used with real-time lighting. But we're just going to use a single light map because of our small scene. And if you want to, you can increase the amount of ambient occlusion if you'd like. Uh, I'm just going to leave this at around the middle and the max distance for the occlusion and the contrast. And we're just going to leave all that at default. Alright, we're not going to check uh, 
block atlas and if you you can highlight over any of these and it gives you a very nice tooltip. Next we have resolution. This is the number of textiles per world unit as it says. Uh, setting this up too high will drastically increase the amount for a small scene like this. 50 is actually plenty and in our scene viewport you can click show resolution and if you zoom in you can actually see each textile and you can set up to 200 and then you can see that there's even more textiles. Alright, but we're just going to leave it at 50 because 50 is plenty. Okay. I'm going to uncheck show resolution. Okay, so there's one other requirement. Our scene has to be saved, so we're going to do a file, save scene as. I'm going to create a... I just want to create a folder. I'm going to call this light map scene. I'm going to hit save. All right, so make sure everything is checked and then just click bake. And then down here at the bottom, you'll see baking texture and it should go rather rapid. Okay, now it's done and you can see in the preview here, you can see the far shadow because we only used a single light map. We only get a far, we don't get a higher res near. And you can see that it created it and you could open this up in any of your programs or any, uh, you just double click if you have it set up and open it up in whatever your default program is. All right, now just to show that it's actually working, you can uncheck the light. And as you can see, the shadows have baked in quite nicely. And on this side, you can actually see the aviate occlusion right along here. All right, so that's all you need to know for baking a light map inside of Unity 3D. It's very simple. Uh, with a model, it's the same way. You just drag and drop, import it in. Make sure you have checked the second UV channel if you haven't already created a second UV channel. Mark it as static, and there you go. If you have any questions, uh, please stop by the forums or the IRC as well. Please follow me on Twitter if you'd like to keep up to date with what I'm doing. Hope you enjoy this tutorial. Thank you.